Hello and welcome. My name is Jenny K. Parks. I have been quilting for about 15 years. I'm a quilting teacher and a quilting designer, and I am about to take you to new heights of quilting glory. We are gonna work through this block of the month that you see behind me. It's featuring the uh, Fernwood collection from Benertex, and you're just gonna love it. So many neat things. I want you to succeed, believe it or not. I want you to come away with a product that you're gonna be proud of, a quilt that you can say, <laughs> Look what I made. So all throughout this, I'm gonna show you tips and tricks. I'm gonna give you my best stuff so that you can have a success when you're done here. So to start that off, the first thing I'm gonna show you is a little trick with grain line. What can happen when we're working with these triangles, and we're gonna be working with a lot of triangles, what can happen is that the grain line and the bias can skew your blocks and make them not work so well. If you are cutting along the grain line, your nice straight edges on the grain line, you're gonna have better results. So I'm gonna show you how to find that grain line. It's a really simple trick. Now you just take your fabric, and I'm gonna take a snip that's about, oh, you know, like maybe an inch down in the fold of there. Then I'm gonna grab it and pull, ready? Just like that. Now what we've done here is that we have all this grain line. You can tell that's right on the straight of grain. No bias in there, so things aren't gonna get twisty and confused. That's gonna be a good tip for when you're doing all of your quilting. I would suggest every fabric that you start with, even if it's a scrap fabric, make sure you've got that grain line in there. So I would normally just trim off that little bit of edge and call it good to go. And I'm gonna show you my other trick too which is a great trick. It's a secret weapon. Spray starch. I love spray starch. You can make those things, those blocks that are skewed, they can make them obey. It can make your fabric line up. In fact, sometimes when I'm working on a really complicated block or something that has a lot of things on point, I will put so much spray starch on it, that thing can walk from the ironing board to my sewing machine to get ready to go. And it works great. So, good tip for you. Okay. So the first, we're gonna cover two blocks today. We're gonna to cover the Dutchman's Puzzle and the Yankee Puzzle. And let's get started with the Dutchman's Puzzle. Here is what that puzzle looks like. It's flying geese, really, just flying geese that we're working on here. I'm gonna show you two ways in this episode to do flying geese and a way to do half square triangles. So well, we're gonna start right here with the flying geese. And the first thing, I mean, really to make this all, it's essentially just squares and triangles. So here's our triangle, and that's sort of the pointy part of the goose. That's gonna be the part that's pointing. We're gonna take our fabric squares, and we are going to, that's our background color, and we're gonna draw a line on it. And you could just take a little simple ruler like that and draw a line, and I like to use this red pin. Let me show you real quick. Simple drawing a line. I'm using a red pin so you can see really well. And actually sometimes if my fabric is dark, I'll still use a red pin anyways. <laughs> Anything so that I can see what I need to see. And then you lay that on there and stitch. I've gone from corner to corner just like that. And now we need to do put another side. So let's, we're gonna put this fellow right here. Oh, I'm sorry, I was skipping one thing. We need to, in order to get our flying goose here, we are gonna need to trim it. So let's take this ruler, and I'm gonna line it up on a quarter inch line. Let me get good, nice looking quarter inch line here. There we go. Quarter of an inch over the line. So I leave a quarter inch in the seam allowance, and I'm gonna trim that off. Voila, that's so easy. And now I'm gonna line up my second one. But before I do that, I should probably press, should I? Yes, I should. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna press this. I like to set my seams real quick. And actually, I don't think it's so much setting the seams, but sometimes it's flattening the thread. Sometimes thread can get out of, your, get out of whack and be disobedient for you. So I think it flattens the thread. I also think that um, fabric is more flexible when it's hot. So if you want to get nice good folds and points, you tell that iron, you heat it up, and then you move it back. I think you get better results that way. 
That's just a little bonus tip. Okay, so we're gonna put this on here. And I'm gonna stitch the other side. I get it lined up. I don't usually pin this, but I always say pin to your level of comfort. If you're freaked out about it, by all means, pin that thing like crazy. But I think you can kind of follow the lines and get a good idea of where it's gonna go. So I'm just gonna stitch from corner to corner and follow that drawn line. You don't need to pin it. Pin to your level of comfort, whatever makes you happy. Beautiful. Ta-da! Look at that. All right, I'm gonna lop that part off. Leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Always gotta do that, don't ya? Then we're gonna press it. I set it. And press it. Nice and flat. So that's what it looks like. Now sometimes I'll make these just a little bit longer. I'll, I'll cut these a little bit bigger than the size that they say uh, in the instructions. And then I trim it down because sometimes things get a little wonky on me. And so I prevent that. I used to have a friend that said, as long as your kitchen is clean, people will forgive you for the rest of your house. And I wanna express a thought here. As long as your points match, people will forgive you for not following the seam allowance. So that's something we need to think about and be aware of. If you're stitching along here, you see right here at this little point, if you're stitching along and something's off in the quarter inch seam allowance, that's okay as long as you get that, that point in, as long as you've met that point there. Let me show you that real quick. All right, so I'm just watching it. I'm gonna be sure that it goes right over that line that I made. Oop, let me pull that up here, got stuck. All right, yeah, sometimes, especially when you're doing this, you're gonna get little seams that catch on your foot. Just keep an eye on those and you can flatten them out, adjust as you need to go, adjust as you go along as needed. Let me straighten that out too. Yeah, I think the points are absolutely the most important. If it's a triangle and it doesn't have points, then, you know, it's kind of pointless. All right, look at that. Okay, so I could have even gone a little bit closer. And in fact, you can see here that I've gone much closer in that, that I can make it match exactly. So that's just something to be aware of. And I'm also not much of a fan of going back and fixing something. I like to learn from my mistake and go on. Let's go on to, what, to whatever is next here. So I think you can see how this block is kind of gonna go together. And I would put those together like so. And just piece it in segments so you have that. And that's how everything blends together here and it'll, it'll go really nicely. That is the Dutchman's puzzle. So let's go on to our next one, which is a Yankee puzzle. And that looks like this. Now I'm sure you can find the flying geese in there. We're all, I'm gonna show you a new way to do that one. And then I'm also gonna show you how to do these half square triangles that we have that give it this really neat roundabout effect. So that's gonna be fun. Okay. So, to make our flying geese, and this is a quick way to do it, you know, instead of just making it one at a time, especially if you're gonna do several of the same color, you want a nice, uh, a nice assortment. So we're gonna take the squares and the rectangle, just like we did before, and you see there I've drawn a line. I'm gonna draw a line on this one too and have a really cool ruler. Fonz and Porter has these awesome rulers to use for this. So I'm gonna put it on here, we'll slide that out of the way. I'm gonna put it on here 
and I'm going to match up this corner that I have right there and make sure the line, you don't necessarily have to match the corner, just make sure the line is going through the corner and then you come all the way down to this bottom part. I want to make sure I have lines on, there we go, I've got a line there and a line there on that end and then you're just going to take your pen or pencil, whatever you want to use and draw a line. Whoops, oh, I just shifted it. That's one thing you got to watch out for there. All right, come back and get it around on the other side. So there you have your two lines. Ta-da! <laughs> this is so clever. And I have to tell you, the first time when I was learning how to do this, I thought, this is, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know. So you put it like that, and then we're going to sew right along those two lines. Ha <laughs> ha! And this is actually going to make four, if you can believe it. I think that's really cool. So we've sewed along those lines, and now I'm going to cut. Leaving that quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to line it up on the quarter of an inch mark here. And you're really going from corner to corner. Just like that. Beautiful. And then I'm going to cut it again. Don't worry, it's going to be fine. Whoop, I shifted. Darn it. Okay. There we go. And then you have two segments. Like so. <laughs> and now we need to press those open. We need to get them to behave and be in the shape we want. And you're still going to say, this Jenny K does not look like, does not look like flying geese yet. And I agree. We have one more step. Ha ha ha, that's so cool. All right, that's behaved. I like this because I think it looks like little mouse ears. Got a little mouse there looking at you. I like stuff like that. Then we're going to take one more seam and put it just down there, same thing that we drew the lines on, and stitch it just in exactly that same way. So let me stitch that for you here. And it's going to be really cool. If I had several of these to do, then I would just do one after another after another. I would just chain piece them and then clip them apart and sew them up. Oh, I think I got a little bit off my line, but that's all right. I'm not gonna tell, I'm not gonna tell if you don't tell, okay? And then I'm just gonna come around here and rotate it if I've just got the one to do. And I'm veering a little bit. I'm nervous because we have company today. You know, everybody's watching. All right. Come here. Okay. <laughs> I know this is really cool. Okay, so you're looking at this and you're thinking, I don't know if that's going to happen or is it going to work. And I'll tell you, it is. We're going to cut along this line right here. Beautiful. Hold that ruler nice and steady. Ah, you can see it now, can't you? You can see it. It's coming out right there. Look at that. Look. And because we would do this with this one as well, you can make four flying geese. Four, four flying geese each time. So that is really cool and a really good time saving method, I think. But to complete this block, we also need half square triangles. So let's get busy with those too. Here are our half square triangles and we're gonna use just the same technique, right? We have this and we draw our lines just in exactly the same way. See, just like that. And now we're going to take our piece, and I've stitched along both those lines that you can see. And then I'm going to cut that fella in half. And it's going to give us two half square triangles. Oop, hold that ruler nice and steady. Pull it apart. Look at that. Look at that, ta-da, squares, half square triangles. I love it, I love it. 
So then I just come over here and press this fella. And then you trim off any dog ears that are sticking out. Snip those fellas. Bye bye. Well, you don't need them. And, and there you go. That's your half square triangle. It's so easy to do it that way because then you get two, especially. So that's nice as opposed to cutting it and doing it on the bias. That's just crazy. All right, so I want to show you one more thing before we stop today. Notice that I've pressed everything towards the dark. Come to the dark side, which is the quilting adage. It, you always press towards the dark unless there's a compelling reason to press in another direction. And for us, for what we're doing, a lot of what we're doing is going to press, just press to the dark. So assume that that's the way it is unless noted otherwise. Now I want to put these together. As you can see, we have this shape right here, this part. And I want to put these together like so. Because I pressed in opposite directions, I think this is so cool, I can snuggle these seams in together. They want to go in right next to each other. Look at that. You can see, you fold that back, look at that. They're just right there next to each other. And so then I can sew this together and they'll fit perfectly. In fact, you can even feel like that if you mush down on your finger, you can feel if they're nice and flat and snuggled in with each other. Oh, let me double check the, the way I need to stitch. That matches, yes. And I do that all the time. I check so many things as I go along. Oof. I always have the pattern right up next, next to me so I can visually refer to it. All right. And test for teacher. Voila! Oh, look at how those go together. Awesome. So cool. All right, so I think you can kind of see how you have your, your flying geese and then these parts and how it all goes together and it's going to interconnect. You notice how I had the Dutchman's puzzle. It was broken up into four different segments. You kind of do the same thing. You do this segment here and you can do four exactly the same and then you put them all together. So that is it on these two things for today. Like I said, we're gonna be working through this whole year with the Fawns and Porter and this Benner Tex fabric, making a wonderful block of the month. I think a block of the month is a great way to learn because you can take it a step at a time. And, and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna work through this all together. So when you come back next time, I'm gonna have a couple more blocks. I'm gonna have some more tricks and tips to share with you. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much. <laughs>